Welcome to our channel Top Reddit Story make sure to subscribe our channel and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our hardest to reply your comment. Men of Reddit, what are some telltale signs that a woman is creepy? When she starts taking offense to doing anything without her involved. Had one girlfriend who insisted that she'd be with me for any outing. Watching movies with friends. Having dinner and drinks with the guys. She always found a way to come along. When I asked why she was so insistent on going everywhere with me. She said she wanted to make sure I wasn't talking to any other girls. And shortly after told me to cut off contact with every girl I regularly talk to. Which really just signaled a huge jealousy and security problem. I told her I wasn't going to do that and to be assured that I chose her to be in a relationship with. If I wanted anyone else I would not have signed up to be with her. That didn't stop her though. One day I went out to have BBQ with the guys without her and noticed on the way there and on the way home a car was following me. It was her making sure there weren't any girls I was talking to. I broke it off with her after that. After a few days of her sending a constant bombardment of angry texts she finally left me alone. This girl I met on Tinder had me take her out to a restaurant and then switched tables with her friend. They had been on blind dates and decided to switch. Her friend was not as attractive and I was very uncomfortable. After ordering my food I went to the bathroom for 10 minutes to contemplate my exit strategy. When I got back they had both left. The other guy asked if he could sit with me so we had dinner and he ate his date sensualadas. It was actually kinda fun after they left. Outright refusing to believe that a guy might not be into her advances. I've seen a woman stare in bewilderment at her boyfriend after he had to repeatedly remove her hand from his crotch because she couldn't comprehend that he didn't feel like getting felt up in a public area. I've also had a woman, middle aged, throw a tantrum because I wouldn't buy her a drink when I, 22 at the time, was at a bar, while I was with my parents and some visiting family members. My ex would like freak out and throw things and scream at me. That's not the disturbing thing. She would ducking forget about it hit reset and act like it didn't happen the next day. Over and over. I started filming her episodes to prove to myself I wasn't going crazy. That's called gaslighting. It's a form of emotional abuse and I most often see people who are very, very insecure deep down use it. In high school there was a girl who liked me. She ended up carving my name into her foot. She'll joke about having kids before you're even in a serious relationship. I went on a couple dates with this one girl who had mentioned how much she wanted kids. Nothing unusual. Pretty common actually. I'm looking forward to being a dad one day. Then she started sending me those weird things where you put two people's pictures together and see what their kids would look like. One time would be quirky. But she sent me a different one every morning for a week. Broke it off when I realized I hadn't even given her a picture of myself. Edit, the only social media I have is Reddit. But I guess people can get anything on the internet. TLDR girl I hadn't talked to in 4 years started messaging my friends asking why I hadn't responded to her good morning text at 10 in the morning. Met this girl in church group in middle school. We got to know each other because of the group but didn't really become friends or anything. Stopped going when I went to high school and never talked to her for 3 years. She commented on her FB status I had and we got to chatting and I agreed to hang out the next weekend. I asked if we should invite other people in our old church group since I hadn't seen any of them in a while and she said no. I thought this was cause she liked me and wanted to hang out with me so I was flattered. I kept talking to her throughout the day. The next morning I woke up around 10am to about 7-8 missed calls. Two voice messages. And countless text messages from her. I was pretty creeped out by then. The nail in the coffin was one of the messages I got was from an old friend from the church group asking me if I talked to that girl. I was confused how my friend knew I talked to this girl the day before. Turns out the girl started messaging my friends asking when I wake up in the morning and why I hadn't messaged her back. I had a girlfriend who yelled at me for spending $9000 on my mountain bike instead of on her. 
I race professional and I took her out to dinner at least 3 times a week and got her gifts all the time. Plus we got to travel the world thanks to sponsors. But the one purchase for myself was to selfish. Update, or a MHSP2 with box components. Literally my roommate's girlfriend. He takes her out to dinner 3 plus times per week. Travels 50 miles every week back and forth to visit her at school. Buys her jewelry and nice things. ETC. Yet the one time he couldn't make it to her school for a visit. She called him to scold him for his selfishness and then broke up with him via text. The saddest part is that he drove all the way to her school that night to talk to her about it. And she fell asleep before he arrived and so he had to sleep in a parking lot in his car overnight until she woke up. Somehow they're still together. Makes me mad because he deserves so much better. Edit, I'm scared. 60,000 texts will do it. Not 65,000. She asks you your sign. Then giggles. Gives crazy eyes. And says we are compatible. Run. Just run. When she has decided you are her best friend after being around you for an hour. Humble brag. Your legacy room isn't that cool Steve. She's hot but still interested in you. When after two days she tells you she loves you. And also proceeds to mention that she loves your green eyes so much that if we ever broken up she would steal them while you sleep and keep them in a jar in her room. She asks what your religion is. And when you give an answer different than hers you hear her mutter we could work on that. Happened to me. She was a weekly church goer and I'm atheist. Oh yes. I had an absolutely gorgeous southern baptist girl in college take a liking to agnostic atheist me. It didn't last long especially after she partied too hard. Overslept and missed a final and failed a class and just said oh well. It's part of God's plan. And carried on like nothing happened. I don't want any part of that level of a lack of personal responsibility. Full stop. When she thinks my beard hair is public domain. Drum girls at bars ducking love to just walk up and grab my beard or run their fingers through my hair. Excuse me itch. I don't ducking care how hot you think are. Keeping your greasy ducking thought fingers away from my ducking face. If you would like to touch either. Ducking say hey you have a real nice beard hair. Would you mind if I felt it and I'd be happy to give you a go. But don't ducking think for one second that you're entitled to just start touching me just because you're hot. It's creepy af and makes me uncomfortable. Not to mention. Who the hell likes random people grabbing their face? If I just walked around drum grabbing girls faces or hair. I'd be in jail by the end of the night with a pie and an air salt charge. But these girls just run around ducking touching people and think it's okay. They are always talking about themselves and when they are it's always about some small instance blown out of proportion to make them seem like a constant victim of the world. I am a woman. And I have had a few friends who do this. Having conversations with them is borderline impossible and downright exhausting. I've tried to limit contact with them because it's just too much. Inability to apologize for anything ever. Punishing you silent treatment for doing something you had no idea would be offensive to them. Having expectations of you. That they don't try to meet themselves. An all consuming obsession with horses. An inability to live her life as it is now. Instead being laser focused on getting a husband and then having children. I'm not talking about normal long term goals here, I mean a single girl who's always talking about finding her husband and having kids. When the proper next step is finding a boyfriend. The step after that being engagement. Then marriage. Then having children. FWIW. Every girl I've known who is like this has also lived rent free with parents. Which tends to limit one's romantic opportunities. YMMV. Of course. I've posted this before. Boo it. A long time ago in the 90s I was set up on a blind date. The girl knew way too much about me. She knew by brother's names. Where I grew up. And other personal stuff you'd have to dig a little to find out. This was pre-Facebook. And back in the 90s she would have had to ask people who actually knew me to find out. She was just a friend of a friend of a friend kind of thing. 
so I noped out of that one pretty quick. Later. I asked the people who had set up the date what the hell ETC. And turns out the girl had had this super long crush on me and was reportedly devastated that I wasn't into her. Luckily I steered clear of that possible Stephen King novel scenario. Long. Long black fingers with heavily pointed fingernails. Arched back at the neck with eyes as black as pitch. Mouthless face. Matted hair. Pungent set. Speaks telepathically through visual symbols. Carries a belt of skulls and only appears after dark. When she tried to blame her constant control and guilt antics on a bad reaction to her birth control. We lived about an hour away from each other and she called me from her car in my driveway. And insisted. Almost breathlessly for 20 minutes that she had to see me and explain this in person. Which I absolutely refused. She knew I was home. My car was there. But the whole thing was so out of the blue and stalkery I told her over and over I didn't want to see her and she could say whatever it was over the phone. And all this after I told her clearly weeks before I hoped we could be friends. But that we should go no contact for a couple months to let things settle. I found out later why she was so insistent. In the three weeks since I broke up with her. She was basically starving herself. Exercising obsessively, and she was a total couch potato prior, and lost around 20 pounds. She convinced herself the reason I broke up with her was because she had gained a little weight. She thought once I saw her I would change my mind. I didn't even know what to think of that. Slightly offended because she thought I was that shallow. And even more creeped out that she had her head so far in the sand she invented an imaginary problem solution for me leaving her instead of seeing her own behavior for even a second. She goes through your drawers when you're sleeping. My cat used to do that. I used to always wake up to socks all over my bedroom and have no idea why. Until one time I woke up in the middle of the night to see my cat systematically taking socks out of my sock drawer and then discarding them elsewhere. Calling up to my job and saying she's my wife and she's trying to get a hold of me. We had two dates Linda. I didn't even duck you. But you're ducking crazy. Leave me alone Linda. WHOTF is even named Linda anymore. When she is a colleague from work and she turns up at the gym coincidentally 5 minutes after you have arrived and she's in a low cut top and starts laughing and touching your arms and bending over and just generally being weird. Especially when she knows that you have a wife and kids and this 45 minute session is the only piece you get 3 times a week. This one is a mixed bag. But demanding to have access to your phone. Social media accounts. Et al. I feel people deserve some privacy, yes. Oxymoron as I'm referring to social media. As their phone's accounts can be a direct line to their inner thoughts. People used to keep their inner thoughts you know. In their head. If they feel the need to confirm via your phone accounts you are a, not cheating. And b, not saying anything they would take offense to. I would look for the door kick them to the curb definitely not marry them. Edit. Spelling. She gets on top. Gets a night witch. Then sticks a razor to my throat and says do you trust me? I say yes. For a couple good reasons. She the cuts me. Starts sucking the blood. Grinding harder. And really into it. I mean it was hot. But not. Yeah no. When they tell you extremely personal details that are supposed to make you sympathetic but just make you uncomfortable and not sure how to react. Had a girl who told me on the way to a park that her first time was in a park, already kinda personal, and that she was graped. She said it really casually too more power to her if she's moved past trauma. But just casually dropping it in conversation was a red flag. When she knew the barracks I was staying at just by a selfie alone even though I was on the other side of the country at the time. She never served. And she has never been to that area before. That phone call got real awkward. Second date is to a federal prison to visit her son that's doing life for med dare. Later saying the phone she snuck in her cooch made her too sore for 6 tonight. Girlfriend was practicing her signature. And asked if she could see mine. Innocent enough. Right? 
I rattle off a few beautiful Johnny Handcocks on a napkin. And beyond admiring my own handiwork. Don't think of it any further. Fast forward a week. And she says. Check out my new tattoo, sure enough it's my signature, first name only, on her right, or on, hip. Yikes. Fast fast forward to her solo European trip. Turns out she cheated on me with a guy with the same first name. Betty was scared. Talks about all the health ailments she, thinks or is convinced, she has. And then continues to consume foods which she claims she is extremely allergic to that wreaking havoc on her health. And holy fuck. As I was typing this a text from her came in telling me about some random health ailment. A girl I befriended in college seemed pretty cool at first. But I quickly learned she had huge attention seeking problems. I took her to a party where she was all over me. Arm in arm. Holding my hand everywhere we went. I wasn't allowed to be alone. When I was talking to another pair at the party. A couple at that. She kicked it up a notch. Trying to kiss and be cuddly and whatnot. I was fine with it at the time because, hey. She sees nice. She's cute. A little intense. But could be misreading it. But I was certainly into her. It was kinda nice being the target of someone else's affection like this. After the party I walked her back to the dorm and she very informatively told me not to try anything because she had a boyfriend. Bonus. Same girl a few weeks later told me that if I had really wanted to sleep with her I shouldn't have told her I was straight because she can't help but turn men. I went on a date with some interweb rando girl years ago. The first date was nice. But she struck me as being pretty strange. That's fine with me though. I like strange chicks. We planned on doing a second date. Ah and she stood me up. I texted her later that night. And her excuse was basically I'm so sorry. I got sick and couldn't make it. I was pissed. But willing to give her a second chance. And said that she could have just texted me to let me know. Because I would have understood. We scheduled another date. And the same damn thing happened. She didn't show. I was legitimately pissed off now. I called her a couple hours later. And I made sure to be very polite and civil. But I told her that this wasn't gonna work out if she was going to no show 2 out of 3 times. She then started basically begging. Saying that it wasn't her fault because she was sick again. I reiterated that she should have just texted me to cancel. And she said that she couldn't because her mom took her phone away. I told her that I was still done. And she tried to have me talk to her mom to vouch for the fact that she was without a phone earlier. We were not high school kids, we were both employed adults. So you can understand how strange this sounded. I noped right the hell out of there after hearing the excuse couldn't make it tonight, my mom took my phone. Ducking weird, serious, people who won inherited a lot of money, what are your horror stories from people begging for your money? My grandmother had an education fund made for me and put money in it every month. I was pretty young and my mom was poor and wanted to use that money to buy pot and cigarettes and other stuff. She kept bugging me and bribing me with stuff. I told my grandmother who made sure my mom couldn't access the account. I wish my grandparents would have done that. My dad gained control of my college fund when my grandpa died. Instead of saving it for when I went to college he used to live off of so he wouldn't have to work. When it came time for me to apply for college there was $100 left in the account that started with about 30000 It's something I never forgave him for. Family coming out of the woodwork threatening to sue for the money. Family have surprise visits and looked like they thought I hid the money in the house somewhere. No amount of telling them we inherited less than $500 would make them go away. They did not believe it. Now they all just hate us and I no longer get invited to family outings. I deal with wills and estates professionally. It's incredibly sad how often ill feelings develop within families where an inheritance is concerned. Even when the estate is modest. When my grandmother died. She left money to pay for my entire college education, including graduate school. At the time. It seemed that all my friends needed money. So, to be true to my grandmother's wishes, 
I said nothing about the inheritance and paid for those college years as she intended. If I had done otherwise, they would have begged me for money for a variety of needs. I had most of my college paid for through scholarships and a fund my parents set up when I was a baby. My room at junior year would always bring this up as an excuse to not pay for things. Example, well you have a college fund so you should pay for my dinner too I have to take out loans so you should pay for my rent this month. I ended up moving out and avoided her for the rest of my time at school. My grandpa was pretty well off and he suddenly died of undiagnosed prostate cancer a decade or so ago. The kids from his second marriage immediately swooped in and started claiming everything as theirs. Despite us being just as close to him as they were. It ended with a lawsuit and the family being split in half. With us not regarding them as family anymore. We ended up getting basically nothing and I'm frankly not impressed with how it was handled by either side. It's really sad seeing people you've known your whole life acting like that and ruining decades of being family in a couple weeks. I was lucky enough to have very successful grandparents. I am also lucky enough to still have all of my grandparents at the age of 31. They are all over 82. The grandfather of importance to this conversation only has an 8th grade education but he built a strong business, water well drilling, when each of his 7 grandchildren were born. He deposited $87,000, the year I was born. I assume that's the same for the others, into a managed trust. We don't make a habit of discussing money. But there are a few requirements. Namely. I won't have complete control over it until I'm 50. I get a statement ever fall and I knew my retirement is take care of. What happened when I told my spouse? We dated for 3 years, been together 8. And it was closed to 3 years before I even mentioned it. Aside from my spouse. It's no one's business. Why on earth would I tell people of my impending windfall? Be smart people. Keep your bank accounts out of conversation. I inherited a fair amount of money when my grandfather passed away. My husband and I were planning on using it to purchase our first house. We had been saving. But clearly could have a much lower mortgage with this windfall. Well my husband works a side business where he built custom vehicles. One friend who was running out of money and his car was only about halfway done. Found about the inheritance, only because we stupidly asked his advice on mortgage options, and decided he was going to pull his car, because he didn't have the funds to finish it, and then sue us for $10,000, and unfortunately we got a lawyer and ended up spending over $3,500 to have him say that the customer usually is right and we'd be further ahead to just settle and pay him. Because the lawyer fees would be much more if we continued to fight. Breaks my heart to this day that a good chuck of my inheritance went to pay that big dig bag off so he could take his vehicle somewhere else to get it finished. My grandmother has dementia and her husband is dying of cancer. They have over a million in assets that have been divided between four sons. One son is a mentally ill junkie who has been in and out of jail. He has already been promised their house as his share of inheritance but he has been doing all he can to get more from his mother while her husband has been in the hospital slowly dying the last few months. He steals her credit cards, opens new ones in her name, and attempts to access their money through online banking. My step-grandfather is trying to get her declared mentally incompetent to prevent my uncle from manipulating her finances but between his health issues and being in and out of the hospital it is proving difficult. When her husband dies, which will unfortunately be soon, he plans on moving into their house, which he already sees as his, and most likely milking my grandmother dry. The sad part is she has dementia and has no idea what is going on. Colon. A few years ago we inherited some money from my husband's grandfather. My husband's brother and sister also inherited equal amounts. His sister. We had not spoken to in several years. Emailed my husband and his brother asking for their portion of the inheritance because her part time personal trainer job wasn't enough to keep funding her lifestyle. Law. I have a similar story. We inherited money from my husband's great aunt. Each grandchild in the family got equal amounts. His sister asked us to give her $10,000 from our portion because she had kids and we didn't. 
It stung because she knew we were struggling with infertility. I am fortunate that my father's family is well off. Everything is locked into trust funds since my grandparents death. Now my father has died I have control over my father's share. My uncle who is a weed dealing smoking in and out of jail never held a job dropkick son of a loving women who always have him hand and brother to my father who tried to help support him even though he was sick for many years. Anyways. I have withdrawn my share because that family sucks at financial management and I have reinvested it in my own trust. Well uncle has started calling me monthly from jail asking for help with labors or to pay for something. He still has living brothers. But he thinks a girl 3 times younger than him should be supporting him because he can't get a job and I am family. I feel nothing for the man who has thrown his life away and leeched off my father in his last years. I am glad though. Better than him harassing my mum. Edit. For those saying change your phone number he has my work phone number. If I were to change it. It is a lot more hassle than he deserves. Clients. Explanation. Business cards. Directories. It's easier to take me off his approved call list in jail. That way when he is out and contacts me at least I know he is out of jail. Also I know this is under a question about horror stories. But really. I got this. No need to offer obvious advice. I won a lawsuit settlement after almost dying in a fire. I was under 18 at the time of the incident but was 18 when it finally settled. My mother told me unless I gave her half of my settlement. I would have to find a new place to live. I was in my senior year of high school when this happened. She said she deserved it because she was the only one in my life who was always there for me. I didn't give her the money. She kicked me out and tried to keep some of my personal belongings not like I had much since everything was lost in the fire. We didn't talk for months until she randomly showed up at my house one day. She asked me for rent money and gave me some BS sob story. I wrote her a check for $5000 hoping it'd make her go away. It did for a time, she and I barely spoke until years later when I was pregnant. A few years ago I was in a bad car accident, hit by an 18 wheeler, and got some money. I told no one, especially my mom. She has insisted numerous times I was entitled to a settlement for it and should speak to a lawyer she found. She took it upon herself to talk to lawyers on my behalf, or tried to. I just ignored her for months until she finally gave it up. I didn't inherit a lot. But back in the early 90s when my brother and I were in elementary school my parents were trying to buy a house. They couldn't afford the down payment so they asked if they could borrow our bonds, $5,000 each, and repay us later. They got the house but I never saw that money again. It was something our grandparents gave us for college one day. Wow sounds like my parents. I love them. But whenever we were struggling financially they asked to use our birthday money from our family members. I gave them quite a bit, couple hundred, for a kid and never saw any of it again. A part of me wonders if that was actually used for bills or for gambling money. Thankfully though. My dad hasn't gambled in years and they are much more stable and smart with their finances. Even more pathetic because it was so little money, grandma lived off her pension after selling her house way cheap to aunt. After she died. Other aunt divided up her money and stuff. I think each grandkid got $1000. One piece of her inexpensive furniture. A few little things. None of it worth any money. But cousin K. Whose parents got a super cheap house that she keeps saying she wants. Carried on about how she was promised everything. She wanted the 10 year old freezer her sister with little kids got. She wanted the dishes. She wanted wanted wanted. 10 years later. I avoid talking to her because I'm sure I'll still hear about all of grandma's valuables that other aunt threw away. I think the rest of us should have just gone in together. Said. Take one thing then someone else's turn and we all would have left after round two and left the rest for cousin K to take everything else and saved ourselves a lot of accusations. My dad has two sisters. One of them was an out of control mess that after stealing and making her parents life hell they finally had to cut her out of their lives. My grandma died and she didn't even bother coming to the funeral. 
my grandpa ended up in a memory care facility which blew through the last of what they had saved up and then my dad and his other sister took over the payments. When he passed away they had paid over 70k combined for him to live in a nice facility for the last years of his life. After he died the mess of a sister suddenly showed up demanding her share of the inheritance assuming that it would be a large sum of money. They sent her a bill for one stroke three of the 70k. I actually didn't inherit anything at all because my mom died broken in debt. But I have a few grand in donations for a spot at her cemetery, still haven't decided what spot we want. My sister found out and keeps asking me for money from the donation fund. I sent her $100 just because I know she lives in the middle of butt duck nowhere. Then she keeps asking for $40 here and there. When I tell her no she later posts of a photo of her smoking weed up. Ah yes. I'm sure you really needed that money for groceries. It's quite pathetic. She doesn't even realize how expensive the cemetery spot is. We don't even have enough to cover a decent spot at all. Friend of mine didn't even win any lottery. She finally got approved for disability benefits after years of jumping through bureaucratic hoops. Almost immediately. Her family descended like vultures. Demanding money for this or that. They didn't believe her that benefits in this case basically means the bare minimum necessities to not die of starvation. They thought she was sitting on a nest egg of thousands and started screaming at her and calling her a liar when she said she was actually broke after one trip to the grocery store. First of all. Who the duck screams at a disabled person? Demanding money? Second. Why the duck do they think she owes them a single ducking dime? Even if she was rich. When they can't even give her a ducking ride to the doctor without demanding gas money. I told her to tell them all to go duck themselves with a fire hydrant. But she's too nice. That probably answers the questions above. When my grandmother died. My uncle asked my grandfather for his classic car worth about $30,000. My grandfather turned him down because he knew he would just sell it. He offered it to my father. But my father said no. Luckily. My grandfather still has it. I need to call him and convince him to give it to my cousin. My sister or me. Because other than my dad. We are the only ones who won't sell it. Hell. I still have my great grandparents car that I won't sell. It looks like sheet. But it runs and I'm slowly working in it. When my great grandmother passed. She left her house to my grandmother and my mother in her will. My grandmother is still alive. But all five of my mother's siblings recently learned that when my grandmother does pass. The house will go to my mom. They fight with her constant. Try to trick her and harass her into moving out when she's the only one out of six that take care of my grandmother who is blind. Partially disabled and has kidney problems. And a few of them have even said that as soon as my grandmother dies. They are taking my mom to court to take the house away. Little do they know my mother doesn't want the house. She wants to sell it so she can move closer to her grandkids. But she said it might be easier to let her siblings fight over it and tell them to duck themselves. These people also tried to have me arrested for stealing my grandmother's $30,000 settlement from a car accident because I happened my buy a $23,000 car the week before she got the money. When I was diagnosed with cancer. My job took up a collection for me. They were very generous and it grew to a fair amount of money. Which we used throughout my treatment so that we didn't worry about bills and whatnot. My sister found out about the money and began to ask for money, never once offering help. But always having a sob story about why she needed the cash. When Lydon said the money was gone. She stopped calling altogether. Oh and when I was a toddler. My mom passed in a car accident. I had bonds given to me from family friends to help me later in life. My aunt who adopted me cashed all the bonds before I even finished elementary school. Leaving me with nothing. Not directly related. But my wife is from a wealthy family. And I'm not. I never accepted any money help from her parents and managed to build a decent career by myself. The problem is that all my friends think that all my achievements are because Y-O-U-H Ava R-H-W-E fan. I'll share my current nightmare that started right before my mom died. 
My mother was an alcoholic who ended up dying of liver failure last May. After my mom died we opened the estate with the state of PA to begin the process of going through her finances and transferring the deed from her house to me. As soon as my info was registered with the state. Every realtor came out of the woodwork to harass me about selling her property. I got it phone calls. Letters. People showed up and wouldn't leave. We had to call the police multiple times on one realtor. I luckily had a great estate lawyer who would hit the people with candies and follow up with the police when they continued to show up. My mom had a town home is a very very desirable neighborhood. It's an easy sale for any realtor but I was still surprised on the sheer number of realtors who harassed us about it. We still have two realtors who stop by our house every once in a while thank leave a business card. I have a sign stating that we are not selling tape to our door. A great aunt died when I was about 13. At 18 I was allowed access to the inheritance that she left me in trust. My GF at the time had a lot of debt and managed to leech most of my inheritance and fritter away the rest of it. My friends saw me as a soft touch, I was a bit, and here and there. 100 pounds by 100 pounds. The money declined. By the time I was 22 it had all gone. My aunt stole a large sum of money from me. When I turned 18 I was to get a check for 18 years of per cap with interest. Six months before my 18th. She quit her job and started working at a small 5 location credit union. She asked me to move my accounts there to help her meet quotas since she just started and would do joint accounts so I could get the benefits too. Ten months later I thought she had a better job and was reaping the benefits when she started to remodel her house and spend her nights at the bar. I didn't think anything of it because she was my aunt and had a decent job. When I went to change banks because I was moving across the country she told me she already withdrew the money and I couldn't get it and since it was a joint account there was nothing I could do about it. While not fine the worst thing about it was that she claimed it was what my mother wanted and was in her will. Then when this proof said she deserved it more than me. And then eventually that because she did it in a legal way it was hers now. She convinced her boss that I was trying to ruin her life so I couldn't even go to them for help. Eventually I got 60% of it back from a settlement but she burned all the bridges she could in the family. She would cut off any contact with people who asked what the problem was. Or would threaten to if they talked about it. Since she was getting free child care from her mom she said she would rather pay for child care than listen to her mom talk about me. So my grandmother had to keep quiet or she would lose her other two grandkids and her last living daughter along with me because I was moving across the country. Total blindside. Only vaguely related. But my parents think I'm a gold digger for loving my husband who stands to inherit half a mother-in-law when his parents die. I would pay more money than I'll ever see in my life to keep them alive and healthy as long as possible. These people have treated me like family, more than my actual family, and all my parents believe is I'm in it for the money that I guarantee I won't actually see any of, and don't really care about. My parents are ducking trash. My in-laws lived very modestly. He worked blue collar. She was a nurse. They never appeared to have money. But my dad-in-law had inherited a bunch of farmland from his parents. When my in-laws passed, we, along with my brother-in-law, inherited that land. It was rented out to farmers so it was extra income every year. But we finally decided to sell it. It was a lot of land and we made a small fortune on it. There really isn't anyone left on my husband's side of the family and my side thinks my husband's side was poor and beneath them. We never told them about the land or the money we got for it. We also live modestly, so no one knows. Knowing my family, that's for the best. Okay I didn't win money but I did win 5 boxes of caramel apple pops, about 240 altogether, in middle school and lem tell you. Word spread fast and it wasn't long before everyone was coming up and asking if they could have won or even a whole box. Even people I didn't know. I am 100% expecting to have a story for threads like this soon. My grandma is 90. In a nursing home. And has at best a couple semi lucid hours a week. My aunt visits her daily. My mom visits 1-2 times a week. 
my aunt brought my grandma to her house where she had a lawyer waiting and had my grandma sign a new will. The old will split the money 50 stroke 50. We have no idea what the new will says. When my mom asked if she could see the will my aunt got pissed and told her she never wanted to talk to her again. My grandma doesn't remember signing anything and doesn't even grasp what a will is anymore. We're talking about a decent amount of money here, like hundreds of thousands. My aunt has always been pretty well off. Growing up she was always the rich relative to me. I have no idea why she'd destroy her relationship with her sister over this. At this point I'm kind of hoping all the money gets eaten up by medical expenses. My grandma had mineral rights in her name. And when she was on her deathbed she realized that all her kids were money hungry and entrapped in cycles of abuse. She decided to leave it to all of her grandchildren. And it grew in an account for each of us to take when we turned 18. If you know mineral rights. You know that the money continuously grows, you get a check from an oil company monthly. My aunt was the executor of the estate, only one without kids benefiting. So she got a cut as payment for her work. She is now currently holding up every legal proceeding to try to keep her cut. She was supposed to sign the estate off to us over 3 years ago. But still refuses to do what the will says. Everyone hates that aunt now. When my great aunt had a massive stroke. She was deemed unfit to care for herself due to the after effects and all her assets we thus put in charge of my grandmother. My mother. And myself. None of the family was particularly awful. It was akin to a tragedy. She was never going to be the same again. Her housekeeper caregiver on the other hand. Was awful. When she found out the assets were in our name. She began to stalk my grandparents. Stalked me on social media. And would routinely call our home numbers demanding a payment of around $10,000 for unpaid services. We asked her what she meant. And she said gas money for buying her groceries and the round trip. Staying longer than she had to to finish cleaning. And the late night calls when my great aunt called her to help her up because she had fallen. There was a contract and payment history indicating that she was paid for everything, including overtime and late night calls. Eventually. The harassment got so bad that we all go restraining orders on her. And we haven't heard from her since. Not one or inherited. 30 years of negotiating and settling severe personal injury and wrongful death claims. For both the insurance company, 18 years, and for personal injury law firm, 12 years, and have dispersed large sums of money to literally thousands of people over the 30 years. Can tell you that the one constant when the money is transferred is the fear of others finding out how much they got. They are not happy about getting the money because of the loss incurred. They fear that struggling family member who wasn't a primary heir and the subsequent requests for money. Many have set up a trust or took an annuity payout just to create a buffer between the money and other family members.